And uh, Congressman Graves, if you would uh, just join us, let's, let's talk a little bit about this whole situation. Because I don't want to be just critical of the Democrats. I will be critical of them, not because I don't like them, but because they're wrong. Their e economics are wrong. They're doing the wrong thing. They're hurting the American public. People are out of jobs. And what we need to do is say, that's not the right way to do it, but we have to have a good solution. We have to offer something constructive. And um, let's, let's talk about that. Right. Well, this is, well, great to join you tonight on this, on this discussion. I think this is the number one discussion going on across America right now, and that's our economy. How's it going to get back on track? And well, we've seen 15, 16 failed months of economic policy coming out of Washington, D.C., right here. And uh, as I spent my time on the recess and uh, had the opportunity 31 individual times speak to various groups on those 12 days, I can tell you the economy is on the tops of the minds. It of sounds the like the people from Georgia got their, their <laughs> nickels worth out of their congressman. 31 separate meetings? 30, 31 separate uh, addresses or speeches over 12 straight days. I would want to be your car. <laughs> so, but I can tell you it's the number one topic on the minds of North Georgians is how to get this economy back on track. But what astonished Georgians so much was that just four days before July 4th, the day of independence, the day of celebrating independence from tyranny and bondage of years ago, four days before that, $167 billion of indebtedness was created on one day here because of the federal government. That's Ooh. the numbers, one, six, and seven with nine zeros behind it. A phenomenal amount, nearly $1,500 per person here in the United States. You're just saying on one day. $167 billion of indebtedness just up to the time of just before the 4th of July? No, just on one day. That in was June day. 30th. June 30th of this year alone, wow. which was, what, more than the deficit of 2006 altogether. And uh, you look at the state budget of the state of Georgia. The annual budget is about $17 billion today. So almost 10 times the budget of the state of Georgia for an entire year was borrowed in one day here for the federal government. Wow, that's a lot of borrowing. So Georgians want to know, how are we going to get back on track? And uh, so I spent part of my time this week on what I was calling my economic advisory tour. We decided we we're going to tear down the walls of, uh, you know, that we see here in Washington where Washington's not listening to the constituents. Instead, we're going to open up communication. Instead of Washington pushing down ideas on job creation on the private sector, why don't we get the ideas from the business uh, leaders themselves, the risk takers, the entrepreneurs, the ones that have the vision, the dream themselves. And so we had a great tour this week and uh, we came up with a simple formula. We're not that far away. In fact, we have what in America, 17 million Americans without a job, 27 million businesses all throughout the nation. And we know all those businesses want to expand, succeed, have a profit because we believe profit's a good word here on, in the Republican caucus. But you have 17 million unemployed, you have 27 million businesses, so the formula is simple. If just one business out of every three would hire one person in the next 12 months, unemployment would be cut in half. And that, you know what? I didn't say government. Yeah. You just, all you have to do is just create one job per every three businesses every three and businesses. there's no more unemployment. And we didn't say if government would hire one more person, we said the private sector. So the question comes down to this, and this is probably what would be a great discussion tonight, is why? Why are businesses in North Georgia and all across this nation saying, you know what, I'm not going to hire somebody right now, even though I want to. I want to expand my business. I want to see my profits grow, my sales increase. I want to invest in capital, but I'm not right now. Not going to do it. Hey, you know, I'd really like to pick up because, as you said, there are people sitting around having dinner in America. In fact, I'm a little hungry myself. I'm going to look forward to getting some chow. <laughs> but they're sitting around there talking about the same things you and I are talking about here tonight. And um, we've, we've talked about one solution, which was the government takes $800 billion. That's what the Democrats did with their stimulus bill. And they said, if you don't pass this stimulus bill, do you know what's going to happen? We might get unemployment as high as 8% if you don't pass this stimulus bill. So no, the Republicans didn't vote for it, but they pushed it through anyway, spent $800 billion, and it really wasn't even good old FDR, uh, you know, quote, stimulus. It wasn't concrete to build hydro plants or roads. It was basically one, taking money from one state, like in the state of, I don't know about Georgia, but Missouri, we're fairly conservative, and we have a, a balanced budget, and we're not overspending, 
and yet you've got Illinois or California, they're overspending on the pensions of a lot of like teachers and things. So they take money away from our states, and I assume Georgia is probably a little bit more cautious fiscally. They take money away from our constituents and send them to the other states where the governments have been out of control spending. Well, anyway, so they so, get so, this, this so idea. Wealth this, distribution on, on the. The old wealth uh, distribution, well, the old socialism deal. Yeah. So anyway, they, they, it's $800 billion, and here's what actually happened. This is putting people back to work the big government Democrat way. Look what happens to the employment in the private sector. It, it's this white line. So 2007, 8, 9, 10, you see the. The, 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 you, you're, you're cre you, there's unemployment, and yet if you take a look at the red line, that's the federal government, it's hiring all right. Instead of, uh, instead of letting the businesses keep some of their money and hire people, instead they're hiring government workers, and, that's, and so that's how it works. And, uh, if I remember right, what about 700,000 temporary workers for census? Yeah. Gathering census data gathering, which have already been what a third the of them been laid off. Trouble already. is, is that the, really the government can't stimulate the economy. Right. The whole assumption is silly because all the government does is takes money and can spend it. But if you put an employment, you hire a government employee, does that create a job? The answer is no, because for every two government employ, every one government employee, you have two jobs you've lost from the private sector because you're sucking money out of the private sector. And so when you, you have the government spending a lot, you take jobs away. That's what's going on. That's why the jobs are going. So well, here's if, I could, if I could expand upon it, because you bring yeah. up an interesting point. Because what I've started to understand just from talking to, to business owners is that the labor pool is, is a, a zero-sum game. You're either in the private sector or you're in the government sector, one or the other. And so as the government sector expands, you're actually drawing intellectual capital and wealth out of the private sector altogether and expanding the governmental sector. So the inverse of that would be if we want to shift some intellectual capital and wealth back to the private sector, we must shrink the governmental sector. 